So any of you that have followed this channel to the beginning know I've been completely pumped about this, but we're back. We are back at the Brickyard. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. So this weekend NASCAR returns to Indiana to go to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Brickyard for the Brickyard 400. We are back baby, we are back, we are back, yeah. classic. It's also the last race before the two week Olympic break. You shut up! I'm so scared right now, you shut up! I've been very excited about this. I know a lot of the drivers have been very excited about this too. They've been very vocal about moving away from the Indianapolis road course back to the Oval. And before any of you come at me in the comments, I don't think this race is going to be a barn burner or anything. I don't think it's going to be Oh, it was one of the most exciting races of the season. I don't I don't think it's going to be anything like that. But I think it's very special to see the cup cars back on the big oval Indianapolis Motor Speedway. One of the most, if not the most, iconic track in all of racing. And growing up as a NASCAR fan, this was one of the big crown jewel events. You got the Daytona 500. You got the Coca-Cola 600, you got the Southern 500, and you have the Brickyard 400, the four crown jewel events of the NASCAR Cup Series. And it's been feeling kind of weird not having the Brickyard 400 the last couple of years. They haven't, ha they haven't raced at the Brickyard on the Oval since 2020, since the COVID season, actually. So it's going to be a very special weekend, I expect. The fan experience and the fans that are there at the track this weekend are going to have a fantastic time. It's going to be a very, very special experience. The return to the Brickyard, the Brickyard 400. So what are some things I expect in this race? Well, coming straight off of Pocono, which has kind of always been the deal when it comes to Pocono and Indy, most of the time over the history that they've both been on the schedule, they usually line up back to back. Like Pocono will come first and the next week will be Indy or the other way around. I don't know why NASCAR lines up the schedule like that, but it's kind of always been a thing. And these two tracks, I wouldn't say are necessarily alike, but they're similar enough and they race so similar because of the long straightaways and flat corners. So I would expect a lot of the same things that we saw at Pocono. I expect a lot of crazy restarts. I expect different strategies. I expect drivers short pitting the stage, pitting with like three or four laps left in the stage. I see draft being a big factor in this event. Fuel strategy is also going to be a big deal here at the Brickyard. One thing to keep in mind though with the Brickyard, I was talking about how they're going to have the crazy restarts like they had at Pocono this past weekend. But the one big difference is between Pocono and Indianapolis. At Indy, you kind of have to figure it out by turn one. You can go through there too wide, but you're, you're not going through here three wide. You might have a chance of going here through here three wide, not at full speed. But I think it's a pretty big risk to take. So we're going to be seeing a lot of drivers trying to settle things out going into turn one. So that's one thing to keep an eye out for, especially, especially if we get some late cautions. If we get a caution with like 10 laps to go, I, I think we're just going to get caution after caution after caution from that point forward because no one's going to be wanting to give up a spot going into turn one, especially with how hard it is to pass at this racetrack. So long story short, I kind of expect this race to race very similar to Pocono, but maybe with a little bit more madness. And like I said earlier, they haven't raced here since 2020. A lot of these drivers in the field have never even raced at the Brickyard. They've never had a next-gen race at the Brickyard. The driver that actually won the last two races here in 2019 and 2020 was Kevin Harvick. He's retired. 
So this is going to be a very interesting weekend. I think by the time we get halfway through the race, I think most of the teams and drivers would have the track fully figured out. But we'll have to see. We're also getting a very long practice, so that could be a, a very bad prediction on my part. They might even figure it out completely before the race because we're actually going to have a full practice this week because, the ne like I said, the next-gen car has never raced at the Brickyard. It's never raced at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. All that being said, who do I think are the favorites? Like I said, I'm going to kind of reference the Pocono. So I'm going to pick maybe some of the cars that are pretty strong at Pocono. I'm also going to be picking some of the crew chiefs as some of the favorites. Because we saw last week the winner of that race was Ryan Blaney. But in my opinion, the guy that should have gotten on top of that 12 car and celebrated was Jonathan Hassler. Because he made a fantastic call last week in a Pocono and the Brickyard, it's going to be a very similar deal. There's going to be a lot of strategy involved. That being said, obviously, I'd say one of the biggest, if probably the favorite, I'd say, going in has to be Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson, of course, raced at Indianapolis not all that long ago in the Indianapolis 500, a completely different car, but he was here not that long ago. And also, he's, he's great anywhere we go. And he also has, in my opinion, in my opinion, the best crew chief in the garage and Cliff Daniels. He's the smartest guy in the garage, in my opinion. So that automatically makes him one of the favorites. Another driver I would actually look at is the number 24 of William Byron. He has a great crew chief in Rudy Fugel. And I saw this interesting stat. I don't usually believe in this, this sort of thing, but it's always, it's always just kind of cool to point it out. The 1994 winner. The number 24 of Jeff Gordon, the 2004 winner, 24 of Jeff Gordon, and then the 2014 winner, 24 Jeff Gordon, and then 2024, the 24 of William Byron, maybe, maybe not. Chase Elliott, another driver to watch. Chase was really strong at Pocono. And like I said, it's also the return to the Brickyard 400, so I expect some good stories to find their way to get through and NASCAR's most popular driver I don't know if he's the most popular driver anymore I would probably say it might be Kyle Larson at this point but that being said he's won the most popular driver the last couple of years it'd be a great story to see Chase Elliott win the Brickyard 400 in its return. Another driver I would look at is Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin in my opinion is the best driver all time at Pocono, a very similar racetrack. I've heard his podcast the last couple of weeks and all year. Seems like every once in a while he mentions that how bad he wants to win the Brickyard 400, the return to Indianapolis. I think out of every race this season, that's the number one race he wants to win, except for maybe the championship race if he's in the championship four. He really wants to win this race, plus he has one of the best crew chiefs in the garage, and Chris Gabehart. I can see that as a huge possibility. And then I would also look at Team Penske as a whole, even Austin Sendrick. I'm looking at all three of these drivers as legitimate contenders for this win because this is the home track. Roger Penske owns Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is the home race for Team Penske. It's the race they have circled. This is probably the number one race they want to win this year. And Blaney just won last week at Pocono. Logano also showed like he had great speed. So I expect these three cars to be very competitive in this race and to be competing for the win. There's no place better to win at than at home. But who is my pick to win the Brickyard 400? I, I just mentioned him not that long ago. He has this race circled and like I said I think he has one of the best crew chiefs in the garage Denny Hamlin I think Denny Hamlin is willing to do whatever it takes to win this race I think he'll wreck somebody to win this race if he has to he wants this win bad he also always brings up the fact that he almost won at the road course a couple of years ago and he got wrecked by his new teammate now Chase Briscoe I just know how badly he wants to win this race. And I think Chris Gabehart is going to do whatever he can to get him that victory. So circle that. The number 11 is going to win 
on Sunday. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. And my underdog pick, I'd say a couple weeks ago, was not an underdog, but because of how poorly, how poorly his team and him have been performing these last couple weeks, especially he's an underdog and he's always been very strong at this racetrack over the years. And that is my favorite driver, Kyle Busch. Rowdy needs to turn it around. It's been the season from hell. That's what I've been calling it, the season from hell. It's been his worst season of his career. It has been completely awful and completely miserable to be Kyle Busch, to be a Kyle Busch fan, to be a part of that number eight team because it's always something with that number eight team with Kyle Busch. I don't think there's a better place to turn it around than at the Brickyard, the Brickyard 400 winning one of the Crown Jewel events. Ultimately, I still think Hamlin's going to win, but this is a great underdog pick to make. I think Rowdy will have a great day. But give me all your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to the Brickyard 400? And who's your pick? Who is your pick to win at the return to the Brickyard? And like I mentioned earlier, this race at the Brickyard 400 is the last race until the two-week Olympic break. I do have some videos planned out for the next two weeks while NASCAR is off. I'm looking forward to making a couple of those videos. Also, I wanted to add in here, some of you may already know, but I don't do my iRacing or any of my gaming streams on this channel anymore. I now do them over on my gaming exclusive channel called Boy Short Gaming. I just got the new college football 25. I of course do a bunch of iRacing still and a couple other games as well. So check out that channel if you want to talk NASCAR, talk gaming, movies, whatever. Go on over there. That's where I'll be doing all my non-NASCAR, all my gaming live streams. But everyone, enjoy the race at the Brickyard. I hope it is a great race in the return to the Brickyard 400. It deserves a great event to send off NASCAR for a two-week break. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying... Peace.